Yeah, so today I'm just going to go through, I'll probably get some very rough mixes. I'm just, like I said, I got to finish getting these, all, all these different things assigned to the different tracks, but then we'll go through and we can start mixing some instruments and stuff. So you can see there's a, there's a lot going on. So the trick is going to be focusing on what reggae really is known for, which is probably the bass, bass and drums. So we'll start there. So honestly, this is like, this is like a good tone for a reggae song. We don't want a lot of high end information in the bass at all. And it's usually pretty well um, mixed where... It's almost all really sub bass for this type of music. So I'm not really going to do a whole lot to this. This is very different from like a metal song or something like that that I usually mix. Um, where we want a lot of high end in there too, just to kind of help fill out the space. So. All right. So let's mute these vocals for right now, just so we can focus on the instrument part. There's, man, there's just a lot of tracks. I think there's like 89 tracks or something like that that was sent uh, to me. So. Cool. All right. Let's check out what we have for the drums. Just some uh, basic samples. We'll get the, we'll get the bass in there and let's, let's get like a kick bass thing going. So what do we have? We have this. Sounds like there should be a lot of, okay. Yeah. So we're hitting this kind of hard. So what I'm going to do, let me bypass this. It might get loud um, or not. <laughs> Usually this this type of music has a lot of low end in the kicks too, so. Yeah, you can see, I mean, it goes all the way down to like 30 hertz or something crazy. So this is gonna be really tricky because th this is also where the bass is in the song, so. We're gonna need to figure out a way to make everything work together. So I'm just gonna start by dialing this back. Just try and tighten it up a little bit. So let's see where this is putting it. Okay. So if we bring in the bass now. Yeah, this is just going to be a, an epic battle. So what I'm going to have to do is side chain the kick drum to the bass. So what I mean by that is the bass guitar needs to get like pushed away when when the kick drum is hitting otherwise you'll never hear the low end from the kick so um i think i have a reset i've made maybe not I'll just start with this one so what i'm doing here i'm setting this up so that when the yeah essentially when the kick drum hits it's gonna take these frequencies away from the bass so So we want to like completely knock that out. Okay, so let me send the kick. Yeah, mixing music can get complicated. <laughs> okay, so now you'll see that this is going down every time the kick drum hits. And that's exactly what we need to have to happen because it's, man, it's kind of a mess right now down in that low end. 
Track spacer. I actually really like. You, you're right, Grant. I probably should be using track spacer. Um, I do have it, um, but I find it's man. It's like a it's a resource hog. So my projects start slowing down, and when I have a hundred tracks in this session, it's it's hard to really use it. Um, I'll start with this, and if this doesn't work, then I'll I'll pull that up and see. So I want this to, to duck away immediately when the kick hits. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to tell. There'll be no separation for it. So something else I'm going to do here. Is uh, I'm a big fan of like using this stuff. This is like a, a delay timing chart. So... I like my stuff to be very rhythmic, so you can look up the tempo of the song is 70 beats per minute, so it tells us how many milliseconds like an eighth note is. So an eighth note is uh, 428 milliseconds, so now if I set the release time for that, it will swell the music back up in the same like tempo of the song, so as like an eighth note. Um, so if you're really nerdy, it sounds kind of cool. It gives it a pumpy feel. Um, so let's see how it sounds. Got to get to a part with a the kick. There we go. So I'm still not really hearing, like, I can't feel the kick drum. Um, coming through the mix, so... We're gonna maybe make it a little bit more pillowy so it'll punch through like on a car speaker or something. But this is really tricky because this is, uh... It'll start sounding weak. If you, if you start cutting too much of this out. We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Let's go back to this. What I'm gonna try, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna try doing things a little differently. I'm gonna try to, there, we're gonna use this one instead. The reason I'm using this is it it should go all the way to like um it should be the full the full band here. But it's not doing anything. I don't know. Oh, that's why. Got to have a range on it. Noob mistake. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now there's a little bit of separation between that bass line and the kick drum. So um, you can actually like get a little bit of a feel of separation now. Before it was just a giant low end mess. Yeah, it's, that's a little bit better. Cool. Okay. Um, let's also bring out, let's make that kick hit a little bit, give it a little bit more snap. Um, don't want to give it too much because this is, again, reggae. We want things to be kind of just enjoyable. <laughs> give it a little bit more. Hey, Ryan, how's it going, man? All right, so things are starting to come together a little bit. Um, let's see what we can do about the snare. Get rid of these claps. Okay. Hey, Nadia. 
Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> All right. So there's this huge low end bump here on the snare, which is awesome. Um, it just gives it so much weight, makes it feel so heavy. Okay. So if we pull in all these, like this shells, let's just get a, a little bit more of a balance going. So snare needs to come down. Thing's called a shaker, but that that is that's like a tambourine. See, people send me stuff and then they try and trick me with like how they label their tracks. <laughs> yeah, that that is not a shaker. <laughs> that is a tambourine for sure. I'm gonna put the tambourine on the left side because I can. We'll put the tom on the right. This needs to come way down though. Okay, so the balance is getting a little bit better. So let's let's start bringing in, they have these other drum loops. What do we got? So if we just solo this. You know what, this, I think this is the sum of all these tracks together. And they just didn't tell me that. But that's okay. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna mute this. I'd rather have, well, no, you know, we'll just dial this back. Because this is gonna be, this, this, this is changing how they the relative ratios of how they wanted the percussion to sound. And then this is like a, a way to me to kind of reinforce what their vision was. So let's just, uh, I'll keep that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that low end though, just because I don't need that fighting with me on the, um, on the bass. Okay. All right. Got to turn the music up a little bit. Okay, let's go back to this. So we also have this thing. So this is a this is something that's different. So let's bring that in. So this sounds like it's just some sort of like hi hat thing. All right, so what I want to I want to make this a little bit bigger. I'm not really feeling the. It's too small sounding to me, and it's kind of quiet in the mix anyway. So I'm not going to turn it up too loud. Oh, it's Nadia. Is, so Mac is with you out there? That's awesome. Welcome, Kirk. Good to see you, man. Okay, so let's. There, so now you can hear, we're going to make this sound a little bit bigger, but it's going to be quiet in the mix, so you're not going to notice this ridiculous reverb on here. It's just subtle enough to give it a little bit of space. I'm also feeling, this needs to be bigger too. Um, I actually really like this waves true verb thing for, um, kind of more subtle, um, like reverbs, like more for the, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the, um, the early reflections more so than the reverb. I don't know. It just has like a cool sound to it. It makes it, to me, it sounds more real. Um, so something I, I'm trying to think of what I usually use. We'll just start with drum room. We'll see how that sounds. Let's get rid of the reverb. So here's here's the dry signal. So it sounds kind of small.
And see, now it, now it feels like it's actually in a room. And then let's see what this sounds like. That's okay. We can keep that in there. I'll increase this a little bit. Give it a little bit bigger space. Something like that. That's, I think that's cool. And then we'll just dial this up in the mix and see how it makes the drums feel bigger. Yeah, something like that. That, I'm, I'm liking that. So let's check out, what do we got? Drum bong. What is this? Some bongos. Cool. Yeah, I dig it. All right. Nothing's really jumping out at me. I think we have a pretty good relationship between these different things. I mean, that that needs to get fixed. What is that? How's oh, the symbol? That is just weird. <laughs> I think the hard cut on it is intentional. Um, it's not something I would usually do, but I'm going to leave it for right now. I don't know. Yeah, it might be one of those weird kind of effects. I, I hear that kind of stuff in, in this genre occasionally, so I'm not going to mess with it. Otherwise, I'd add some reverb or something to try to make it not so hard cut. Oh, man, I got to keep up with these comments. Steve, good to see you, man. Oh, man, Kyle's here, too? Man, welcome, guys. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. This Sunday is more of a chill Sunday. So, excited to work on something not so aggressive like I've been working on the last few weeks. Okay. Yeah, this is starting to come together now. Um, so on my drum buses, I usually go with like, um, I like to add compression to the entire bus because it just gives it more of like, a, gives it a, this nice little movement to everything. Um, S, like I usually use the SSL style compressor, but this thing works really well too. I don't know, sometimes I go back and forth all the time. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to dial in something that feels, gives a song a little bit more of a groove to it. And again, I'm going to use my cheat sheet and uh, look up the tempo of, of the song. I think it's like 400 something milliseconds. So it's 70 beats per minute. So 428. So then. And it's probably the science-y part of my brain that makes me want to dial in the exact release times for the tempo of the song, but I think all these small details really add up. And then you could also do the same thing for the attack, um, but I think that's a little bit more arbitrary, so I just go until I f the, the drum is hitting right. So we'll go overboard with the compression just to see um, what it's actually doing the signal, and then we'll dial it back. So I want more of like a pumpy kind of thing. Yeah, that's... Yep, that's better. Let's see what happens if we dial the attack way up. kind of it takes the hardness off the kick which actually might be good for this genre hey doug how's it going man zach thank you for coming in you guys rock if you guys have questions about what i'm doing or anything at all or just want to say what's up like go ahead or if you know someone that might be interested in this tag them in the in the chat 
they'll get notified and then they can come hang out with us. Cool. All right. I like I like how that's feeling now. Yeah, it's a very different approach because this style of music, I really don't. I'm not going to clip the drums too. Maybe I will later if I'm having trouble with getting things to like keep up. But reggae has so much space in in the music. You don't really want to go crazy um, like you would like hard rock stuff. Um, let's check out some of these synths because we have. Oh man, we got a lot of stuff to go through. Where where are we at? Let's see. Oh, we got guitars and synths. Okay, so let's check the synths out. What do we got? We have That was kind of a cool thing. What was that? Oh, the brass swing. <laughs> it's so fun working with producers from like all over the world because like so many people, um, they just have like su such different backgrounds and you get the coolest music. Okay. Oh, so see here, here again, this is where they're trying to trick me. So I think this is a group track that they sent that is probably a bunch of these other tracks. Um, because this has that. So this, so this is probably just the sum of all the other ones. So this is why it's important to label your tracks before you send it to your mixing engineer so he can work quickly. Um, so again, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the drums where I dialed this back just so I have a little bit more control over what they sent me individually. And then this is like the summation of what their vision was. So I'll keep that and just use that as an anchor in the mix that way. Andrew, what's up, man? Welcome. So let's bring this back in. All right. Yeah, so that's sounded pretty good, but it's it's still feels small. So let's do some things so to make it bigger. So for like the organ, anything with like an airy kind of organy feel, um, I always tend to throw some sort of like phasing thing on it. So this is a a Sound Toys plugin, and this if you listen, I'll dial this up, but it'll sound really really wide. Check this out. So for things where, especially with this song, since it's so vocally driven, I mean, listen how many vocals we have. And let me just let me just bring the volume up for you guys. And we have so many vocals, we don't want to fight them. So having that phaser on this organ, anything airy like that, we can push the the sound of it around. The vocalist so they'll be singing and then it'll just be surrounded by this like this organ um, baby, baby, another cool thing to do is like a, a ping pong delay or something like that um because that'll delay that'll send it left and right and so it'll stay outside of the the vocalist that's in the center so that that's also something i like to do on anything that's more of a textural kind of um ethereal sound in, in a mix Cool. So we, I guess this is, this is like an old school, like forties brass thing. This is cool. I'm actually not going to mess with that. I, I like how that's, that feels. So. All right. Here's another one of these like pumpy synthy things. Um, so for this one to get it wide, I'm actually going to do this. It's a ping pong delay, but the, the, uh, I'll show you, check this out. So I have it 
the delays on the left and right side way different. So this is like a quarter note and a 16th note. And what this does is this really just, um, it makes the, the repeats like very notice, I guess not, not like noticeable, but it's different from a traditional pattern that you're used to hearing. And so you kind of get like a gallopy kind of thing going on in that. I think helps to give it a lot of space too. So check this out. I'll dial this in. So it changes the rhythm of it a little bit. Let me turn it off. But this is a quiet element. And so I think it'll be all right in the mix. It just kind of gives it a little bit of something. It's like that, that secret sauce, you know? <laughs> but the thing I'm not really digging is this is it's a little bit um, the volume is a little bit uh, out of control so I'm just going to gently squeeze that with a compressor but we still want to keep that those dynamics because it, it reinforces the beat you know so you don't want to mess that up Daisha, what's going on? Thanks for stopping by. There we go. So that, I'm digging that. Uh, and then, you know, let's just put a little bit of this, this on there to give it a little bit more width, too. All right. So this part of the song... Normally, with that sound, I would make it sound big, but because it's there's not much going on right now, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. I want to keep it small so that when everything comes back, we can we can uh, it can get big again. You can't have big if everything's big, so we'll keep this small. <laughs> got some ad libs in there. Those got those got to come down. Awesome. This is going to be such a fun track when it's all done. Alright, let's get... We got to get rid of those vocals again just because there's so much going on. Let's just try to get the, uh, the feel right with all these other instruments. So, oh man. Yeah, it can be overwhelming when you have this many things to listen to. So, let's just... We'll start... You know, we'll, we'll solo each thing and just try to get a, a quick mix of each individual instrument, I think. And then we'll bring everything in one at a time. So this needs a little bit. It, I think we should make it sound a little bit bigger. Give it a little bit of reverb on it. Good. It doesn't need anything else. Let's keep going. What's this thing? So this is just like a little piano stab. Um, let's hear it in context. I don't know. So it's just there to reinforce the beat. We'll keep it. We'll keep it like that. It doesn't really need anything that I can think of. Um, let's check this out. What is this? Okay, we can make this one sound a little... We'll actually, we'll just give it a... Um, let's just give it a little bit of a delay. Okay, so it's just something to kind of wash it around a little bit. And then when we finish the mix and we start mastering and gelling everything together, um, every, all these little subtle details really pop up to the surface. Um, so you gotta be careful because it'll, it'll take over the mix really fast. Yeah, so there's so much space here. Yeah, normally I would just start 
destroying the mids out of the, out of these pads, but there's nothing here. Like the song, this is you you got to keep some of this stuff. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna sound really hollow, especially in like a car or something. Take a little bit of this out and we'll brighten it up. Sounds like uh I wonder if that's following the vocals. Hang on, let's let's see. Yeah, it's it's harmonizing with the vocals. So we'll keep it subtle because it's it's not supposed to outshine the vocals, so. So something else I want to mention, um, this song is, so it's a female vocalist, so typically they are, have brighter voices or, um, especially with pop music, it's very airy sounding. So I'm intentionally not going and adding too much high end to, uh, any of these instruments because that's going to fight those vocals and the vocals and the beat are going to be the most important part of the song. So we have to keep our priorities straight so we have here's like a little guitar chug thing let's play with this a little bit what do we got this is um it, i guess that's a guitar i i, I would argue it might not be but let's see Okay, so this is a cool thing. This needs to come up in the mix. All right, what do we got here? We have... Oh, this might... Oh, you know what? This, I think, is, a, is the group track for all these ones again. So let's dial this thing back. And... Uh, Make sure we make a note of it. Okay. So, typically in, in reggae and stuff like that, there's a lot of like a, a roominess to it. So let's add a little bit of room sound to this guitar. This one guitar that has that. Yeah. But we don't want it to sound too far away. So something like that. Just to get it started. And give it a little bit of vi like vibe. Otherwise, it's just gonna it won't feel right, especially like just how big everything is. There are some annoying frequencies though that I'm hearing. We're gonna take care of those though. that that needs to go away <laughs> needs to go very far away and that and then because I took so much out I'm just going to bring some of that back okay see how that sounds now let me bring it back see if it still hurts our ears There's still a little bit that needs to come out, but it's much better. All right, so check this out. L listen how, how it sounds a lot smoother. There's like, I don't know, it, it reminds me of like, on a piano, like if you push the high highest key really hard and it's like that that sharp, stabby kind of sound. I don't know. I get that when before the EQ. Yeah, 
yeah, it's just much smoother sounding now. And again, if this if this comes up louder in the mix, that that will be very noticeable. But now that we dialed it back, it should be it should sit better. So now I don't know what this is. Something there. Oh, it's like it's almost like a bass. I don't. That's very weird. Weird thing. So we want to control this because this has a, a lot of dynamics. Like if we look at this, it gets it's really quiet. It gets really loud. There's a lot of bass in it. This will ruin your song if you don't take care of that and treat it right. So let's. Um, what do we want to do? Uh, I'm just gonna. Um, we'll do, we'll, we'll use this. So we just want to clamp down on it a little bit. And then I'm going to back it up with a limiter just to make sure that nothing goes above a certain volume. Otherwise it's going to poke out in the mix and you'll be sitting in your car and you'll be like, what was that? That's... <laughs> Okay. So again, all this is doing is just kind of controlling the volume. Yeah, there's a lot of sub bass there. So that will suck up. That That's going to be a nightmare if we don't take care of that now. All right. So what happens if you you leave like that really low bass? You almost sometimes won't even hear it, and then all of a sudden, um, your your the song will just get quiet, and you won't know why. And it's because that those low frequencies are sucking up all the energy in the song. There we go. That's much better. So now we have this pad. So this one, um, I'm gonna do the, we'll make it a little bit wider again, um, just to get it out of the middle. I guess it's oscillating back and forth, but it's always good to get, bigger is better. So this is this is all like mid range. So this is where we have to be very careful with it getting in the way of the vocals. So let's bring the vocals in. Um, if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Okay. So now if we go back to that pad here, this one. Nope. This one. Cause I want your bed, I want you so bad. You're all I have, you're all that I have. See here, it's in the right in the way of the vocals. If we back it up, we gotta find out where they're clashing the most. Right here, it's hard to like understand the vocals, so let's get rid of some of that. Awesome. So that immediately clarified the vocals for us. We gotta knock this down too a little bit. This is this is like the like the deep chesty era part, you know, like the radio announcer voice where it's deeper. Uh so if you if you don't clean this section up. Uh, like around 200 hertz, 180 hertz. Um, there's a lot of that energy in the vocals, and that just gives it like power. Um, otherwise, it'll just sound really frail. Um, and being a female singer, because it's already a brighter sound, we want to make sure that there's a little bit of body in there. So we got to clean up some of that 200 so that those vocals will sit in there. And they sound like they sound uh, bigger and powerful. Honey, you, you 
drive me so crazy. Cool. Um, all right, let's keep looking to see what else we got to clean up. So we got more of these pads. Uh, that's that texture thing. So we have some strings. Let's see what these sound like. Almost can't even hear them. Yeah, there's a lot of elements in the song. They're all very similar, but they're just like different elements. I feel like some of these need to be in a different register or something because everything is like the same note. And so when you have everything playing the same note, there's no room left uh, in like the sonic spectrum. And it's just super crowded in one area. You need to play different notes so you can spread it out a little bit more. Okay, so this this is a little bit higher. So this this is okay. So this is this is like a choir pad. Um what is this thing? A little whistle. Okay. All right, we got most of this stuff. This for the most part this will be okay. So we'll bring in the bass, drums, Let's bring in these uh, synths again. And everything's feeling pretty good right now. Cool. All right. So now we have, God, this song has a lot of stuff going on, which is awesome. So we have all these guitars. So if we bring these in. Yeah, I, I think I'm so far it's sounding good to me. Uh, we can bring in the pads now. Oops. Alright, so now we have, here's all the tracks, everything's in now. So let's... Um, let's, let's start getting a little bit of a vocal sound. I only have like 10 more minutes that I have dedicated to this, so let's, let's try and tackle that. Baby, turn the lights down low. Can I be your? Okay. Can I be your lover, baby? Turn the lights down low. Um, what is okay? So we have these two tracks. So we'll um, let's bring these out. Oh, can I be your? All right. So here's our main vocal. Baby, baby, can I feel your type? Okay, so there's a bunch of things I like to do with vocals. Um, the first thing is this is a this is like a pop reggae song, so let's just um crank some highs in there. So what I'm doing here is I'm boosting a lot of the high end, but if it exceeds a certain uh, amount, then it's going to lower it down for me automatically. So this is important because otherwise that that top end will go get crazy out of control. But this adds that air, that poppy air to the vocal that everybody is looking for. So. Because I want you bad, I want you so bad. You're all I have, you're all that I have. I can make you feel alright. I can give you all your dreams so sweet tonight. Yeah, see, see, it's so much more airy and it gives it an intimate feel now. So I'll turn it off. You, you'll hear the difference. It's amazing. Cause I want your bed. I want your so. So this is with it off. You're all I have. You're all that I have. And this is with it on. I can make you feel alright. I can give you all your dreams so sweet tonight. See, I mean, that's that is like the pop sound. That's what you. That's what you want. So, um, so we got that taken care of. 
I like how that feels. So now let's, um, we need a, some sort of compression. Um, I like pop vocals to be a little bit not as controlled. So I do a lot of like parallel compression um, if you want to get nerdy about it. But basically, basically I'm taking the same signal and I'm just compressing it and blending it back in. Hey. So what this is going to do is this is going to give it a very consistent in your face sound and we'll just dial that up as, as we are mixing. So let's see how, how this is sound. Down low. Can I be your, can I be your lover, baby? Turn the lights down low. Can so that's getting a little bit uh, sibilant. So let's go and add a, put a DS around oh, can it. Can I be your, can I be your lover? There we go. We turn the lights down low. Can I be your? So what this is, this makes the vocal sound like it's right in your face. This is, you know, like she's literally talking to you. So. I love a baby. Turn the lights down low. Can I be your? So, and I'm a huge fan of like really over the top um, <laughs> vocal sounds. So I, I have several delays that I put on here. So let's, I'll dial these in one at a time so you can hear them. But um, I usually use three, two to three reverbs and two to three different delays. And they're all layered so that it gives it, it just flows with the, the, um, the performances. So let's just Baby, dial something in. turn the lights down low. Can I be your, can I be your lover, Baby. Turn the lights down. So there's one. Can we'll put in another one. Your, can I be your lover? Let's bring this can in. Can I be your lover, baby? Turn the lights cool. down. And low. can I be your? Let's um. Can I be your and I like a very very subtle reverb. If you start, if you put in too much reverb, it'll it'll counter all that effort we just spent bringing the vocalist right up to your face. So this you have to be really, really careful anytime you add reverbs because it, it just pushes the vocalist way back. So let's check this out. Baby, baby, can I feel your tight? Because the thought of you is never. So she sounds right. like she's way back. So we gotta ring this back. Okay, cool. So this is now it's starting to get what I like to call like the vocalist starting to get kind of flowy in the mix. So we bring in the instruments the now. Down low. Can I be your Here we go. Okay, let me now we just have that one vocal in. Baby, turn the lights down low. Can I be your See how now the vocals is kind of flowing with the groove of the beat a little bit more since we're reinforcing it with that delay. Um, and it's nice, bright and airy, so it doesn't feel like it got pushed back either. So the two are kind of offsetting each other. And that's so important when you do this type, this type of music. I mean, honestly, I don't think I really need to do too much. I... Um, We'll see when it starts, when we start um, getting into mastering a little bit more, if, if maybe I need to clamp down on the vocals, but I don't want to overdo it. It just, it has a good feel and reggae, like I said, has so much space. So it's like, it's one of those things where you, you don't want to overdo it. You just want to make it feel good. It's more of a feeling than it is, um, you know, following the rule book. So what I'm noticing, what I'm noticing now that we have the vocals louder, is that there's a lot of mid range in these other instruments that we need to get rid of because it's starting to make the vocals hard to hear or hard to understand. So let's find out, find out where that mid range is. So it's it's these these types of instruments that are making everything all screwing up my vocals. That's what they're doing. 
it's this kind of stuff right in right in here so let's bring the vocals back and find out where the problems are cuz i want you bad i want you so bad every night i've been waiting for your call head is spinning from all the alcohol cuz i want you bad i want you so waiting for your call head is spinning from all the alcohol so I'm just going to take a little bit out here and then down in this lower range again. I want to make sure that the vocals have that that body. Otherwise, especially, like I said, female vocalists, it'll just it'll sound like she's like the vocals just get so thin. Ooh, okay. I can make you feel alright. I can give you all your dreams so sweet tonight. There. Now, if you like listen to music, you can, you can place that whatever those chords are, they're surrounding the vocalist now. So it's it's uh it's getting it out of the way so that we can visualize the vocalist. Um so let's find some of these other ones that are disturbing that balance. This is probably one. Knife. I've been waiting for your call, head is spinning from all the alcohol. Cause I want your bed, I want you so bad. You're all I have, you're all that I have. Yeah, you can hear right here. I can make you feel alright, I can give you all your dreams so sweet tonight. When when this is boosted right here, the vocals start getting they're hard to, to really hear the, like the, enunci the enunciation of everything. So we're just going to get rid of some of that. Waiting for your call, head is spinning from all the alcohol. Because I want your bed, I want you so bad. You're okay, cool. Right there. So that, that's, a, that's, I like that, that a lot more. I have your Oh man, here's another. This one is again. It's it's all right in that mid range. So let's let's see. Do the same trick. Let's listen to the vocals again. Yeah, it's if you listen to it by itself, it sounds okay, right? I mean, it's not like you wouldn't think. Oh yeah, we need to fix that. But it's always everything is in reference to something else. So it's so important that if you're mixing your music. That you don't just do everything in solo. You can start there and find like what's working, what isn't. But once once you start putting the pieces together and stacking everything up, make sure that you're listening to the most important elements and then dialing that stuff back that is getting in the way of of what you think is the most important part. And I feel your tight because the thought of you is never enough. I've been waiting for your call, head is spinning from all the alcohol. Cause I want your bed, I want you so bad. You're all I have, you're all that I have. I can make you feel alright, I can give you okay. all your dreams so sweet tonight. Again, these are just these are just little tiny things that I'm just trying to I'm just trying to carve out a little bit of that that range out of all the instruments to make the vocals slip right in there. So um, what we got? This thing. Cool. Okay. So we're getting close to the one hour mark. Um, so I'm just going to bring everything back in and just see what, what it sounds like, what we were able to accomplish. So we have the intro. Baby, turn the lights down low. Can I be your, can I be your lover? Baby, turn the lights down low. Can I be your, can I be your lover? Honestly, for this kind of music, I think we can go baby, can I feel your way more over the top with the vocals. Because it's thought of you. Okay, so that, I, f I know what's interrupting everything. 
It's this. When those are swelling, it's taking away the vocals. You can't, can't hear it very well. So we want to clamp, clamp that down. Let's do that. Let's, let's completely destroy it. Okay, that's a little bit better. And then there's also a little bit of mid-range. I want to go a little bit more aggressive on this. I'm actually going to just low shelf this. There. See, now it's not interfering with those vocals anymore. Cool. Um, I think that's a, I mean, that's a wrap. That's, that was a, a solid hour um, of me playing with the song and just trying to get everything to fit. Um, basically, at this point, I just go and do a lot of different bus compression things and just dial the levels in and then take some time away and come back and listen to it later when my ears kind of go back um, and just, you know, it's all details at that point, but the majority of the feeling is there now. So um, I'll be doing some um, vocal production work on this, doing like some pitch correction, uh, tightening of those background vocals and all that. And it should sound pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm excited to share it when it gets done. So uh, if you tuned in today, thank you so much. Um, I'll, like, I'm trying to do this every every week or two. Um, I've been making promises before, but... Uh, yeah, I, I keep, keep slipping up and getting busy with other things, but I'm going to make an effort to do this more often. So, um, yeah, keep in touch and thanks for stopping by. See you guys next time. Adios.